On today's episode of Locked On Avalanche, should the Utah Hockey Club keep their grimy fingers off of our Yeti? New episode of Locked On Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. It's always appreciated. And make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter X, Locked On Avalanche Instagram and threads, questions, comments, concerns, opinions, Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. And make sure you're subscribed to our subtext as well. Link to that's in the show notes below. When you do, chat with Kyle and I one-on-one. We get your opinion, everything Avalanche related, which we share on this very podcast, which we'll be doing a lot of today uh, because we'll be getting to Alexander Georgiev and his season grade. He's next up for that. And Mondays in the off season are typically Monday mailbags. And that's where we're going to get a lot of uh, questions from our subtext people as well. So uh, I figured we would start here, sir, quickly. We are recording this. It's currently the second intermission between Dallas and Edmonton. Edmonton is leading two to nothing. Not over yet. Anything can happen. We've seen crazy things happen. Um, But if it does go that route, if this holds true, Edmonton, your your Stanley Cup final is Edmonton and Florida, which I think could be a good cup final. I think Dallas and Florida would be a good cup final. Um, where where where's your rooting interest? I guess uh, be, between either of these three teams remaining, it is. I'm as a fan, I am pulling very hard for this Florida Panthers team. I like this magic and this mojo and the repeat status where they are handling it different, not touching the trophy. Just like Dude, I, I I think it's and I, that stuff. Get out, it, uh, get out. I, of here I grew up as a wrestling fan. They're yeah. they're finishing their stories. What they're doing, they're going back and they're it's a whole it's a whole build. It's a beautiful story. Let them go back and go get that Stanley Cup. Edmonton, uh, if that's who it ends up being, unless Dallas pulls out some kind of magic, mm-hmm. I, I just it's going to be McDavid, and I don't want to hear about that all during the Stanley well, Cup. You're going but, to and you should. Yep. Yeah, oh. It's fine. Like I, I, w- I would rather in Edmonton, Florida, because then I honestly wouldn't care who won it. I could be able to watch the Stanley Cup final in just relax mode uh, because I couldn't do that if it was Dallas because I just yeah. dislike that team. Obviously, you kind of have to um, being an Avalanche fan in the division. And I, I my rooting interest would totally go to the side of Florida. But if it's Edmonton, da- uh, Edmonton, Florida, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind who wins that one. And I, like I said, I could just casually watch that and just enjoy it and and not kind of be so hardcore rooting for one team because of my dislike for another team but you mentioned like the holding the, or like touching the trophy and everything like that I, I, dude that's I, i'm not a superstitious person like that stuff i i it kind of just grinds my gears when when it's so like don't do it don't do like people really feel like it, it's really going to make that much of a difference. The only thing I'll say is it for Florida is I guess they did last year. I guess they picked it up and carried it around like it was the Stanley yeah. Cup. And then we knew they lost, obviously, in the final. So because they made it the very next year, okay. They they didn't want to touch because hey, we, last year we touched it and this happened. And this year, if if if, if there's there's, you know, just one season in between where, you know, you touched it and it didn't go the way you want. Fine. If you want to go that route. But other than that, I don't care if you touch the puck. I don't care if you say shut out. If a goalie's pitching a shutout, even if he's on your own team, I don't care about that stuff. I am not a superstitious person. I know it's always going to be a part of sports. It's not me. I just find it fun. I just think it's, it's that's what entertaining. it is. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. But, but, but you have those fans that just, you know, if you say shutout and, and, and then the shutout doesn't happen, like they will attack you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, bro, I had nothing to do with it. Like they, they really buy into like this whole superstitious stuff, which is just kind of funny to me. But well, I do, I do fall in that one. I will not say that word while it's going on. The same with a no hitter in baseball. You just don't talk about it. You, you can. It's okay. 
I just is, I, it's I, one of those I don't I don't, I don't yeah. hold it too close to the chest, but it's one of those that I observe. I know, I know, I get it. And and I knowing that I don't purposely do it. Yeah, I don't go out and purposely say shut out. I don't go yeah. out and say like oh don't touch it. I don't I don't say any of that stuff because I know people are so big into it, and I'm not just gonna upset yeah. that. Kind of we're thing. not we're not having a, a follow up episode when. In two minutes. Did you see what he said? Shut out. No, we're not. We're not talking about that. We're just observing. Uh, there's more important things going on. So, um, so we'll we'll keep an eye on that, and we'll see where the obviously you'll know who who won that game by the time you're listening to this when it comes out. But we'll keep an eye on it for the duration of, the, of while we're recording. Um, but let's jump into some mailbag questions here, and um, a lot of these are from subtext. We did take a couple from. Uh, we threw it up on Instagram as well. I wanted to start with one that was um, says, how should the abs respond if the new Utah name is in fact the Utah Yeti? And you saw the the owner, he was on, he was doing some interview and I guess they've kind of whittled it down to four names or maybe he just said there's four that are standing out among the 20 that they came out with. And two of the ones that he said were at the top were the Yeti and the Mammoth. Now both of those are not gonna are gonna make Colorado fans uh, unhappy because um, they're you know with specifically the Yeti because mm-hmm. that is you know a, a kind of a, a history with the Avalanche and is it free game to take that yeah because obviously it's not it was never the Avalanche nickname but they had references to it with uh, the the obviously the foot. Uh, patch on the shoulders for a long time their mascot at one point was a yeti that ended <laughs> kind of in odd fashion um but it is kind of kind of like synonymous with the avalanche and would you be rubbed the wrong way if the the utah hockey club did eventually end up with that name and I, i'm gonna throw it back to you in this context what if they went with the utah grizzlies i know it is an existing hockey team and they had a bears logo does right. that upset Boston Bruins fans? What if they come out as the Utah um, Yellow Jackets and they have a B that was a logo that belonged to Columbus when they first started? So I I feel like, yes, it was part of the Avalanche history mm-hmm. and iconography at one point, but it feels like the Avalanche have made a a pretty staunch stance on we're not doing that anymore. That's the side of it. That's interesting. Cause the average have kind of like distanced themselves from it and they just completely got rid of it. And they just went to the, the Colorado sea on the shoulders. Now um, you don't hear about it a lot anymore. So is it almost like it's more fan service right now than the franchise really hanging on to it anymore. And I think the fans are just like, well, no, that's part of our history. And even if it was still a part of the avalanche, you know, like uh, makeup as far as like uniforms and stuff like that, you're not called the Yeti. So it is free game, but it's one of those, is it just one of those unwritten rules that it is synonymous and it is kind of known that this is part of them. Do you go after it? I don't know, man. I, I, I see both sides of it and I just think it would be like, and. Eh, but the other part of it is outside of avalanche world, do people really like think the Yeti is that close to the avalanche? I'm not so sure. Like, if and, I went to like my Ranger fans, would be like, you know, Utah's thinking about taking the Yeti and avalanche fans would be mad. They probably would say why. They probably and, wouldn't understand why. If we took the logo, the Yeti foot logo out on the street and we did a man on the street interview and said, hey, who does this belong to? I bet you 80% say North Carolina. Over Colorado, <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, it's it's uh, something that b- means something to Avalanche fans. In the grand scheme of everything, if <clears throat> I don't even think if they went with Yeti, they would go after the foot. I think they would have like like different logos and looks just to stay away from that a little bit. But I mean, about if if you mean the Utah logo, yes, yeah, no, it wouldn't be a foot. I mean, they they could do some cool logos with it. They really could. And it's, I, I just, yes, it was a part and it was something you used to have avalanche fans, but you were never the Yeti. There was never right. like, you now right. have Bernie. It, that's more 
makes sense with Avalanche than a a Yeti, but and it Do just you feel that um because it took 25 years for the Avalanche to to bring back anything with the Nordiques. Um do you think this kind of, if say Utah does end up going with Yeti, do you feel like that just kind of shuts the door on the Avalanche being able to do anything 25 years down the road when they want to bring that back for something? Maybe they can't. I mean, they could. They could still do it. But then you have Utah fans being like, well, that's our look. And then you just get this back and forth between who had it first and, well, that's our nickname. That, that was never your nickname. Well, we had a uh, Yeti foot. Well, that's not that's not your nickname. You know what I mean? You just get this back and forth. Is it worth it? And 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 does that let you, you know, does that allow you to really kind of bring it back if you wanted to in the future? And you you say, does it shut the door? I feel like that door, they paved paradise and put up a parking lot over that door. I don't think it was mm. ever going to be opened again, even in nostalgia. I think if going back, mm. they would have probably gone with the piping and the Jersey look, but I don't think the foot was ever coming back because they kind of flirted with the Nordiques thing off and on throughout the 25 years. The foot, it's just been like, why? It's It's been a shrug of the shoulders and like, that's a silly request. Move on. The I way the avalanche of, I do, uh, fans love it. it. I, yeah. I loved it too, but it just, the messaging from the avalanche themselves, it, it doesn't feel like that important to them. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like this is more fans than, than the avalanche. Because, if if the Avalanche cared, maybe there'd be some conversations with the ownership of uh, Utah. To be like, don't go that route. That's yeah. we plan on doing stuff with that, and and maybe they they shut the door on it that way. But I don't know. It, it would be a little upsetting. I gotta say, it, it it would be because I feel like then it's not just solely the Avalanche lay like, claim to like the Yeti. So it would be a little disappointing, but we'll see. We'll see where it goes. It seems like it could be either Yeti or Mammoth. And either way, you're going to have upset uh, Colorado fan base. So. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get our first break in. And uh, we got a, a question from uh, Vargar, our good friend Vargar, which we'll get to uh, right after this. All right, let's hear from eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, style, which we call what, Mr. Sullivan? The Nathan McKinnon Trilogy. eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts. For your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. And with all of the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, jumping back into some uh, mailbag questions, and this one's coming from Vargar. If you are the Avs GM, who on the active roster do you consider part of the extended core beyond the easy answers of the big three? Meaning, who on the team wouldn't you want to trade? I could give you a forward and a defender. Go for it. I would give Arturi Lekkinen, and I would give Devontae's. I think definitely Taves. I think if you're ha having an extended core, I think you're you're putting Taves into that mix. He might be like the next guy. Like uh, you got your your big three with uh, McKinnon, Rantanen, and Makar. If you're going to expand that out to four guys, I think you're putting Taves there definitely. Mm -hmm. I think if you're extending out to five guys, <laughs> I think you're right with uh, Arturi Lekkinen. But he, when you go that far, um, is he untradeable? No, I like, I think there's outside of Devon Taves. Um, I, I, I don't know if there's anybody on this roster that I think is, is just safe. I mean, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I mean, I think there's a lot of guys that, that are safe, I, you know, but in terms of like, if I'll say it this way, if a, a good deal came along, that was just too good to pass up um, outside of Devon Taves. I think anybody on this team is expendable right now. Not saying I dislike them. I love Arturi Lekkinen, and it'd have to be a really good deal, obviously, for to let him go. Um, but I, I mean, you, you look at at who they have right now. I think really 
any, I, I'd be okay with, like I said, the right deal. I think anybody's expendable. And you know, the, <clears throat> you posing it that way, I have never really thought of it. I'd like the, the untradeable. Hmm. And if you did trade Arturi Lekkinen, that's a huge locker room loss and a huge just battery. He is, he charges up every line that he's on. But if you told me, insert big, let's just say, hey, we could get Nazem Kadri back. But Lekkinen's got to be part of the deal. Make it however you want. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Not at this stage. I mean, what what's Kadri now? Kadri, how old is he now? Well, I no, it's I'm just throwing out like a big name, just a okay. big name, like to to put a band aid on, take you from average Avalanche team to Stanley Cup contender in one move. And would Lekkinen, would losing Lekkinen, would that be something I, you're okay with? And like that's rough. rough. Like you. It's very like Taze. There's no question. Just move on. I will not entertain that. But Lekkinen, mm, I, don't I know, know it's tough. It's tough. Like, it, it, like I said, it had to be a, a really good deal because he's he's a lot to you. He does a lot for you. So who you're getting back needs to do that and then some. There needs to be an upgrade there. So what is that upgrade? I don't know. We're not we're not kind of throwing out trades right now, but. Um, it's just the fact of, I think, you know, going back to the question of like, who's, who would you consider a core? If you're expanding it out to five guys, he's in there. Yeah. Uh, but man, if someone came around and be like, Hey, Arturi Lekkinen is someone who'd really fit with us. Here's a ridiculous deal. I don't think the Avalanche would say no, I really don't. If they got them better, if any move gets you better, you do it. Yeah. It's that simple. It's that and simple. I, so. and, it, and Lekkinen, I think that goes to his like years of service with the avalanche too he's he's been around as long as he has like it, it, there's not that many with that cup team that are still around so yeah um but i mean having said that he's he's one of our favorite players so oh yeah no i mean <laughs> it'd have to be a, a unbelievably sweet deal for me to do that because you rely so much on him and what he does so yep. uh most likely not going to happen uh madam battle axe she, she throws three out to us if you could go 88 miles an hour and go back in time which game would you like to have back and why uh if you could have the life of uh, a person for one day doesn't have to be an abs player who would it be and why and finally what is our favorite activity to do in our free time meaning mm. the off season so start with the first one you could go back and change a game which game are you changing for me I think it's the overtime game with the this Dallas Stars team in the bubble. That yeah, man. Yeah, that one hurts. Yeah, that one really because that was before you obviously won the most recent cup and you had aspirations of doing. Even though it was bubble hockey and it was a little bit fluky and how, you know how the whole season was ending up. Um, it was still hockey. It was still a season. Your name was still going on the Stanley Cup and you had a good team. And uh, man, that that one that one really hurt. I got to say that, you know, most of the time yeah. when, when seasons end, it always hurts. Uh, but this for like for this season, they were the better team uh, that season. I, I, that was a very evenly matched team, but uh, teams. But I thought the Avalanche were, were a little bit better team and just going to get it done. Yeah. Well, that question, that's the easy first answer. But then also you're wiping away everything that came after. Because that possibly you probably don't go out. <laughs> right. And, true. You, yeah. you don't make the moves that you go make to eventually do go get that cup so mm -hmm. yes so erase that game from my memory that wakes me up at three o'clock in the morning yeah but you also run the risk of the butterfly effect and ruining so everything it's true you, you can always play that game you can always play that game do you have one specifically that you go back and no that would have been that would have been the one but yeah that butterfly effect still reigns supreme yeah there's a lot of where the avalanche are now and in the trophy case come down yeah. to those bad games all right um, I'll skip over to her third one because uh, I didn't really give much thought to that second one. We could be one person. It'd probably be someone like Kevin Smith. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Where I could just sit around and talk hockey or like just do things yeah. I love and have the creative freedom just to just occupy that world. That's a really good one. That would be fun. And because the funny thing is, actually, I can play off of that because what she says, what we do in our spare time. Uh, I read a lot of comic books. Mm. <laughs> so that goes in with Kevin Smith's world right there. So 
and I have been to the secret stash in mm. in Red Bank. Uh, fantastic place. Fantastic. Yeah. And to my to the third question, yeah, I, I fill a lot of my time like I also in school, but I play guitar every you chance do. I get. I yeah, it's all the time. Like it's right here. So yeah, <laughs> it's um, gu guitar. Yeah, I have. Oh, and you locked up. This would be a fantastic time to talk more Kevin Smith stuff. No, but no, and I don't have a lot of free time with the kids as well. So it's usually watching television with them or the yeah. goofing around with them and being dad <laughs> and then guitar whenever I can. I was saying, you know, with the, the comic book thing, I have the Marvel Unlimited. Mm. So it's just thousands and thousands of thousands of, of Marvel comic books digitally at your fingertips. And yeah, I'm usually reading like, I'm knows deep in a comic book so yeah we need to get you on that dc train no nope marvel through and through um here's one let's see uh will the abs spend landy and nachuskin's money and worry about it later <laughs> uh i i can't tell you how bad a business that would be to do that i'm sure there's a lot of people who want to just do exactly that do vegas be vegas throw just Take that money, go get other guys, worry about it later. The fact that you're expecting both of these guys to come back early in the season, really a month or so into the season, uh, it could with, with Landis Scott, it could be opening day. We don't know. Um, with Nachuskin, it's at least middle of November. That's still early in the season. The fact that you're expecting both of these guys to be back by then, um, if you go spend their money, you are in a terrible situation for three quarters of the season. So no, they, they can't do that. Their hand, I know everybody wants to figure this stuff out and now and go get players to replace them for, for the, the short term. They just cannot do that. Like the abs are in a, a rough spot more with Nachuskin than they are really with Landis Scott. Cause if Landis Scott is not ready, you can put him back on LTIR. You can't go spend his money um, because he could come back at any point. You're going to have a good idea when training camp comes around when he's going to come back. You're going to have a really good idea. And you already have an idea when the going to come back. So for that first six weeks of the season, uh, you either play with one of them or neither of them. And if you play with neither of them, you just got to get through those handful of games until potentially both of them come back. And then you just go from there. But just going off and and you know uh, recklessly just spending their money is not what the Colorado Avalanche are going to do. No, and especially like you got to think we we just talked last week about how little cap space this team has as is, and the last thing you want to do is go spend money that you really don't have. And then when it comes yeah. to the trade deadline, you're playing poker with your back turned, showing your cards to everybody. That's 31 other GMs that know. Hey, the Avalanche are in they're in cap trouble they need help and now everybody has the upper hand on the avalanche so you you don't want to play those hands where you're having to figure it out through the season you saw how they tried to figure it out through the season this year and how we're having no stanley cup playoffs to talk about right now and, and i'll end it with this question this is kind of play off of of that in terms of the cap issues um, there's a question that said, try to extend Miko now or wait until next year. So you have one more year left on his deal. Um, you can deal with him now, or I think maybe like July 1st or whenever, when, when that new season opens up, you can start dealing with him and extend those guys when they're in their last year. You can do that. They did with Taves. I remember the exact time frame when they extended Taves, but um, you can do it at any point during the, the regular season. Um, or do they risk it and let him become a free agent, which would be an unrestricted, and then he's free free game? Um, basically, the question is like, when do you do that? Do you do it now, or any point during the season, or wait until the free agency comes and he's unrestricted? Honestly, uh, this would have been a let's let's work a, a deal, try and get something going. I say we got to wait. With everything that you see, the dominoes, you got to put this team together and then worry about next year because you still got to try and get through this upcoming season. Address mm -hmm. it a little bit later on in the regular season, but this is not something, this is not issue number one. Totally agree. I think they do address it. I think they get it done at some point during the season. 
Um, but you're hundred percent right. Their, their focus right now is uh, f- filling out this roster, getting free agency done. You got the draft coming up and stuff like that. Um, see what you have in Nachuskin and Gabe Landeskog and, and what their time frame is going to be. Um, and it could be, it could be late in the season when it happens and that's okay. That's all right. But I do think it gets done at some point during the, during the season. And once all, they have all, you know, I'm sure they have like a checklist of stuff they have to get through. And once most of those are checked off and you know it, how Gabe is doing, how he's feeling, you know, what's going on with the Chuskin as best you can know. Um, and you have your roster and your season's going, and then you kind of look ahead to next year that's when they'll kind of like dive in and say, all right, let's get something done. But I do think they get it done during the season. Could be like after the all-star break, but he won't care because he, he's going to get, he's going to a nice little increase probably. So he missed the whole preseason to sign this deal because we were waiting on him. Mm-hmm. Now like Miko can wait on the avalanche just a little he bit. He might have to, he might have to. So, um, all right, let's get to Alexander Georgiev and his season grade. A lot to talk about there. We'll do that next. First, let's hear from FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Let's let's look into the crystal ball. What do you think? Who's going to be the favorite in Stanley Cup final, whether it is the Panthers and the Stars or the Panthers and the Oilers? You think... I think it's Panthers no matter what. The way that I they're too. playing, I think whoever they're playing, I think the Panthers should be the favorite. You, I do too. I completely agree. I think so. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. That's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Season grade time. And as we make our way through, we do this alphabetically. So uh, today it is abs goalie. Alexander Georgiev. And if you're watching over on YouTube, there you have it for his grades. I gave him a C plus. Everybody else gave him a flat B, including uh, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom. YouTube, 58% B. Twitter X, 49%. Instagram, 59%. And Threads, 52%. I got to say, I'm a little bit surprised for you giving him a B because you were you were more critical of him than I was. I was more of the Georgiev backer throughout the whole season. And, uh, you know, you were much more harsh on him. But you came in with a, a flat B. From Mr. Well, Georgiev. how do you get diamonds? It has to be a lot of pressure. And that's honestly. <laughs> and Yes, I was extremely critical of his play. And it was warranted. But sure was. Yep. When it comes to the playoffs, who was the shining star of the playoffs from after game one of the Winnipeg series? Mm-hmm. It'd be this yeah. player on the graphic. Um, yep. It wouldn't be Nathan McKinnon. It would not be Miko Ranton. It would not be Kale McCarr. They took nights off. You know who did not take a night off? The guy that I was perfectly fine walking away from. Right. And that's on me. But Hey, he, he he has two assists last year. How about that? So, I mean, for a goalie, he yes, he's had ups and downs, but guess what? He lost one he had one more uh he had one more um one less loss than he did the previous year. His numbers other than the save percentage are basically similar. Like you're getting you know what you're getting out of your gift. Yes, there's been ups, there's been downs, but that's team wide. And mm-hmm. stepping back, looking at this season in totality, some of them, yes, were on your gift, understandably. But yeah. it was a whole team thing. The chemistry was off. You heard the locker room speaking out on effort on a couple of occasions. You saw it on display in the Dallas series. He did the best he could, and he had everything going against him. He had that little freak out that led to penalty minutes. It was a whole roller coaster, but honestly, we asked him to win us games, and he did in that Dallas series to a point, and he definitely did in the Winnipeg series and outplayed Connor Hellebuck. 
Yeah, I don't disagree with any of that. Um, I, I I feel like, and we even said, like, based on his postseason, he probably, and who knows what the Avalanche were going to do in, in in the off season. And say say how he played in the regular season carried over into the postseason. We don't know what the Avalanche would have done. They're getting him on a really good deal cap wise, so they probably would have kept him around for one more year. Why not? Like he he's he led the league in in wins. He was an All Star. You know, you can spin it to where you keep him around for another year. You could have also said, like, he just didn't put it together a full season and we need to move on. I don't think that was going to be likely. The, the The playoffs that he had kind of just eliminated all of that. And he's going to be back next year. And they are going to really hope that how he finished the season is how he can start next year and continue that for a full season. The difference between his first season and his second season are, in my opinion, big. I, I don't think he had as good of a second season as his first season. And and the numbers show it. I mean, we were really big on, you know, not giving him uh, or not him not getting enough rest. And he didn't. Um, he, he played 62 games in his first season with the Avs. We played 63 this past season. So, like, he's getting a um, huge workload so that needs to come down and hopefully Eustace Anunen kind of takes the reins of the the backup role and can spell him and maybe get that game get that those games played down by like 10 games and then you have a fresher Georgiev throughout the regular season and even heading into the playoffs but what he gave you in the playoffs um br brings his grade up for me I probably would have given him a, a C minus to a C if the abs, let's say were eliminated in the first round and he played poorly, but his play, I can't, I cannot just for the, the, how he was so up and down for the regular season. I can't see how I can give him in that B range. Uh, if you're going just playoffs, he's an A. Yeah. If, if you're going just regular season, that's in the C range. So I kind of, I, I just didn't feel right giving him a, a B, even a B minus. And again, I have to take it's so funny how there were some people who were not happy with me <clears throat> for not giving Jonathan Drouin an A or even an A minus. And uh, because they, they wanted me to to eliminate his getting to know you period with the Avs. And but for your give, it's OK to take everything in totality for the for the, for the full season and give him a grade according accordingly. So that's where I am with him, I, and, and I still back him. I still like him. I still think I still like how he plays the position, um, and I think he can have a really good season next year. Just going off of this year was not how he like you know the 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 save percentage just jumps out at you. Yeah, point nine one nine his his first year with the Abs. Point eight nine seven this last year. That was a struggle. And get, so uh, goals per game went up. He was at 2.53 in 22-23, 3.02 in 23-24. Looks a little bit better because you have an offensive-minded team that can outscore the problems, and they did that many times with him. I like the guy. I'm glad he's going to be back next year. I think he can have a really good season. But I got to be honest, it was you never knew what you were getting with Alexander Georgiev from game to game. And, you know, I and going back to your point on – a fresher your give and limiting his workload a little bit mm -hmm. it's a, kind of a two-pronged thing uh, the avalanche did not anticipate what went down with pavel francos to happen either right. you definitely had the feeling that there were one a one b and that was their game plan going into the year and stop me if you've heard this one the abs just didn't have the money to address all of the problems of the trade deadline mm -hmm. so they didn't and they kind of just went with your gift and a lot of those starts he was put in there to get back on track. He had rough games, and it was we yeah. were we would have those. Well, who do you put in? And your gift would go right back out there, right. just just to get back in that mindset. So you think that what he learned in the playoffs, he approaches next season with that mindset. And hey, you get a night off because here comes here comes Eustace, right? And exactly. you get a true one A one B. Hopefully. Hopefully that, that, that is kind of where I'm looking forward to next year and seeing what you can do when you play him a little bit less and he's a little bit more fresh on his legs. So um, over on subtext, Coy says, I think a C plus ish is fair while he played uh, well in the playoffs. His inconsistency was a major play play problem, excuse me, all season. Hopefully he can be more consistent next year. 
That being said, I do hope that Bednar is more balanced in his use of Georgie and Juice. Like, dude, this is everything I was just saying, <laughs> exactly. Cannot disagree with what he's saying. Yep. Uh, Madam Battleax, she gives him a B. Uh, he was a straight D for me throughout the season. Then he began to climb a bit and then fall. The inconsistencies were brutal. But if I'm honest, his performance in the playoffs were downright great. He really came through. Do I wish we could have had, we would have had, had been like this throughout uh, and even up to the playoffs, of course, but he did shine in the postseason. Yeah, that's just what you got with him. It is what it is. Regular season struggled. He, we say it all the time. Who's going to be that guy that steps up in the playoffs? It was, it was your goalie. It really was your goalie. So, uh, and it's just, it, we said it many times before too, Kyle. It's amazing how a, a flu or a cold from uh, Eustace Anandan could have saved Alexander Georgiev's career with the avalanche. It's just the reality of it. Oh, hang on. Yeah, and I, I agree that he had a couple games that were D, like F-type performances, and for him to be one of the, the better shining spots of the playoffs says a lot to his growth and what he kind of figured out. We're going to see what he takes from the first two seasons and bring into season three. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and finally, Mark says, uh, Georgie gets two grades. Uh, the regular season, C plus, playoffs, A plus plus. So that's how Mark's doing it. It's kind of oh. how you got to look at it. Yeah. It really is. So I, I'm not against it uh, and giving him two grades because it was two different players. So it really was. And it's amazing how that the, the his one horrible game was the very first game in the playoffs and yeah we were all th because of how he ended the regular season was exactly how that first game in the playoffs was we were all thrown in the towel they're like he has just lost it but he turned the corner and he turned the corner quickly so that is very encouraging going into next season you get that you're feeling pretty good with who the abs have in net from we'll four GF to your GF. Exactly. He got his name back. <laughs> uh, all right. That is going to wrap it up for today, everybody. So uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We have There were some questions that we didn't get to, and there's always a bunch of stuff that we can go off of, uh, some questions that we didn't answer. So we'll be back tomorrow, answer some more of those, anything else that might be happening in the quiet time right now for the Colorado Avalanche. So uh, let me check the score really quick before we – it is – Two to one with six minutes to go. Getting down to the wire. Let's go watch the end of this game. All right. That's going to wrap it up, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, making this your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. He is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche Podcast. We'll see you guys tomorrow.